G'day everyone, my name's Michael Taylor and welcome to 64 Motorsport. If you've just bought an E46 BMW, then there's one thing that you need to do before you go clocking up a heap of kilometres, and that is checking your coolant system. The coolant system on your E46 BMW requires regular maintenance and servicing to keep it operating at its optimum best and to avoid costly repairs and engine breakdowns. So in this video, I'm gonna run through all the things that you need to check, maintain, and replace to avoid cooking your engine. Now let's get started. The first thing I'd suggest you do is get a pressure test done on your cooling system. Now you can either do this yourself and go out and buy a pressure test kit, which is gonna set you back around about $100 to $200. If you're gonna be doing a lot of DIY maintenance on your E46, then it's probably not a bad investment. If you don't want to invest the $200 in a pressure test kit, then take your car to a mechanic or a radiator specialist and they'll be more than happy to do a pressure test on your coolant system. The reason you want to do this is because the pressure test will load up the cooling system and identify straight away any leaks and worn components in your cooling system and give you a launching off point in terms of what needs to be replaced straight away. Now, even if the pressure test comes back with no leaks, then there are still maintenance items that you need to run your eye over to get an idea what should be replaced and what may wear out before the next service. So I'm gonna start with the radiator because I think the radiator is the heart of the cooling system. And it's the most visible item that everybody sees and associates with their cooling system. So let's start with the radiator and I'll show you what to look for on the radiator for your E46 BMW. <laughs> As with any radiator, the first thing you want to do is check the condition of the fins. After months and months of driving, what you'll find is you'll get a build-up of dirt and bugs, which will get either caught in between the fins or they'll bend the fins over, and that's going to restrict the airflow going through the radiator and affect its cooling efficiency. The more air that flows through it, the much more efficient the radiator is in terms of cooling down the coolant temperature before it makes its way back through the engine. What we're looking for is bent and damaged fins, like here and here. So how can you fix that? Well, I'd like to start by removing any dirt and bugs that are caught between the fins, and the best tool for that is a soft bristled toothbrush. And simply give it a good brush and brush out the bugs and things like that. With a soft brish bristle, it's not gonna do any damage. And then what you wanna do is try and open up some of the gaps from those bent in fins. So you need to be really careful with this. The last thing you wanna do is poke a hole in your radiator core, particularly if it's still working good. So a couple of tools I've found best for this. You have got a small flat blade screwdriver, but this item here, and I don't know if I can focus on the tip properly, but basically this is it's what ladies or men, I guess, let's just say what people use for nail art, so for painting fingernails and things like that. And it's got a, a small end on it, but it's got a rounded off portion at the top. So it, it's not sharp, so it's not gonna poke a hole in something. But what you can do is get into those in between those fins and just try and reshape them a bit open it up a smidge so that air is able to flow through between those fins and improve the cooling so the more the air that you've got going through it the more efficient the radiator is going to be now the bmw radiators use a plastic end tank so on some radios where these end tanks is where the hot and cold water enter and exit the radiator are made from aluminium, but on the BMW, it's made of plastic. So what you wanna do is run your eye over it, look for any signs of wear or potential leaks and things like that. So if it's at all damaged, then that's a good sign that you're gonna to need to replace it. 
the other area too is on your drain plug. The drain plug on the E46 radiator is a plastic drain plug and it's got a rubber o-ring on it. So that's prone to age and get hard and reduce its sealing ability. So check that as well. Check around where the hose connects to the radiator. So you may be able to see on mine that's really worn and to be honest this radiator is due for replacement it already leaks i pressure tested it before i pulled it out and yes i've got to replace it so as part of my build i've already budgeted and allowed for a replacement radiator but they're the sort of things that you want to have a good look at and you don't have to remove it to make these inspections you can generally do this while it's on the car so that's what you need to do to check your radar. So if you're at all concerned about it, you don't know the age of it, and the previous owner hasn't given you a service history, then a new radiator will set you back around about $250 Australian. Try places like um, clickableautomotive.com and also Run Auto. They both supply BMW equivalent radiators. So in other words, it's not the original BMW, but it's a radiator made by the companies that supplied BMW, so it's exactly the same quality. And $250 for a new radiator may seem like a lot, but when you compare it to the cost of having to repair a warped or cracked cylinder head, then it's a small price to pay for peace of mind. The next thing we're going to look at is the radiator fan. Now, there's two types. Depending on the age or and model of your E46, it'll either be a mechanical fan, which has got a clutch and a fan attached to the crankshaft, or it's going to be an electric fan like this one. But what you want to look for is signs of wear and damage on the uh, fan. So on the fins, you want to make sure it's rotating freely. In the case of the electrical unit, check the back, look for signs of rust and corrosion around the, the motor and the switch unit. They will be a telltale sign that it may not be operating. The next thing you, you will do, particularly with the electric fan, is bring your engine up to temperature and then monitor it. And when the engine's up to temperature, the fan should automatically kick in. The engine at temperature and the fan isn't starting, then you'll need a replacement fan. A replacement fan's around about $290 Australian, but once again, you need that fan operating to ensure that when you stop the set of traffic lights or your stop start traffic, that you've got some airflow going through the radiator. So now that we've looked at the heart of the cooling system, let's go stick our head under the bonnet and have a look at all the other components which make up the cooling system and require some checking, maintenance and potentially some replacement. I'm just making my way underneath the bonnet of the E46, but one of the things I didn't mention in relation to the radiator, and it's a really common failure point on your cooling system, and that's in relation to the expansion tank. The expansion tank on the E46 is made from plastic and it's a really common failure point for coolant leaks on your E46 BMW. If you've got no service history in relation to the car you've just bought, this would be probably one of the first things that you want to replace, regardless of whether it looks okay or not. If you don't know how old it is, just buy a new one. They're about $50 Australian. While you're there, there's a couple other components that make up the expansion tank, there's the radiator cap of course, so order yourself a new one of those. At the bottom, there's the coolant level sensor, so you might as well get a new one of those. And then, this is the bracket assembly that secures the expansion tank to the radiator. And at the bottom of that, you wanna check these fittings here where the expansion tank slides in because you want to have a good seal there and also at the bottom there's another blue plastic drain plug and it has an o-ring on it so you might as well replace that as well if your securing points look okay and there's no sign of wear or cracks or anything like that the bracket should be okay but at least get the expansion tank the drain plug, the coolant level sensor, 
and the radiator cap. You want to replace all those straight away. Now that I've covered off on that, let's get further underneath the bonnet and we'll have a look at your hoses, water pump and thermostat. I've got the bonnet up on my E46 and you'll have to excuse me because I've got a couple of projects going on so it's not fully assembled under here but at least I can show you the key areas that you need to look at. Let's start with the easy ones, your top and bottom radiator hose. Now with any radiator hose, what you're looking for is any signs of cracks or brittleness. The hose itself should be soft and pliable. You don't want it to be hard or anything like that. But with the BMW radiator hoses, where they connect to like the expansion tank and the radiator and the water pump, they have these plastic ends with a securing pin. So being plastic, that is prone to deterioration. Good rule of thumb is probably about every 80 to 100,000 Ks, they need to be replaced. So you've got a top and bottom radiator hose, then you've got heater hoses, and they're located down here. So I'll just move the camera around to show you. That's the hose there. So it disappears right back towards the firewall, but access from underneath the car is pretty easy. So you've got a couple of hoses there, which are your heater hoses. Now there's also a, uh, a coolant pipe which sits underneath the intake manifold, which is that's the intake manifold assembly there, and there's a coolant pipe which basically feeds the um, the heater system. Uh, it's a metal tube. Generally, it doesn't give a problem, but it does have a couple of rings on it, I believe. So they may at some point give you some leaks. Generally, you should be pretty safe with that one. And that's, unless that shows up in your pressure test, generally you should be safe with that. So as far as your hoses go, my recommendation is you buy a full kit and there's a couple of ways to do it. I believe Clickable Automotive used to do a kit, but I haven't checked recently whether that's still available. You can certainly buy the individual hoses from them, but if you want to buy a click, if you want to buy a kit, then places like FCP Euro in the States or ECS Tuning both do, or and I believe Pelican Parts also do a radiator or a coolant system overhaul kit, which comes with you know, top and bottom radiator hoses, heater hoses, a bit of coolant, all, all that sort of stuff. And they're, I think, about at $250 to $275 US. So you will need to work out what your exchange rate is. Freight's probably going to be about $50 US. So you're up around $350 to $380 Australian, roughly, depending on what the exchange rate is at the time. Buy a kit. I personally, as soon as you buy the car, would be replacing certainly the expansion tank and all the accessories that go on it and all the rubber hoses in the system and replacing the coolant. So I'm gonna cover off in the coolant in a sec, so keep tuned, because I'll run through my thoughts on that. So unless the previous owner has told you that they've replaced them within the last six months, do yourself a favor and get those replaced because they're the items that suffer from fatigue due to that hot, cold engine cycle and are gonna wear out and they're the items which are gonna let you down halfway down the freeway on your way to work or your way home from work. So get them done and you know they're ticked off and they're just certainly good and reliable for another couple of years. Let's have a look at the next item I wanted to cover off and that's your, your water pump and your thermostat slash thermostat housing. So I'll just move the camera around and I'll give you a squeeze at where they are. So this thing here with the rag poking out of it, that's the thermostat housing. You've got a click here for your sensor. Um, and then just underneath that, that pulley there, that's your water pump pulley there. That thermostat housing uh, it is made of plastic. So once again, it's prone to failure. So regardless of whether the thermostat itself is working, that is a, a weak point which can fail. Add that to your shopping list as well. It comes complete with the thermostat and you, you know you've got that side covered. And then as far as the water pump goes, you need to keep in mind that the standard BMW water pump comes with a composite or plastic impeller, not a metal impeller. And it doesn't seal with a traditional gasket it seals to the uh, block using an o-ring and it's just a rubber o-ring so that o-ring can get hard with age 
and cause a leak and the composite impeller on the water pump with age, heat, cool heat can start to break down and fracture and not be as efficient. You can upgrade to a water pump with a stainless steel impeller and they're about $70 Australian. It comes with a new O-ring and if you replace that, you know you're safe. So yeah, I'm, look, I'm adding a heap and heap of stuff that needs to be replaced, but trust me, these are worthwhile investments because once they're done, you know you're safe and secure for a couple of years and a coolant leak where your engine overheats is gonna cost a lot more than the few hundred dollars you outlay now to prevent a problem that from happening down the track when you're unprepared for it. So that's why I'm suggesting that these items are replaceable items. And unless you know, as I've said before, a service history where you've got a date and a mileage as to when they've been replaced, might as well bite the bullet and do it now and you'll save yourself a heap of grief, trust me. So we've covered off on all the hoses, the water pump, the thermostat housing, the radiator, your fan. What about coolant? Well, let's get back to the desk and I'll cover off on that. So I'm back over at the desk and, or well, my toolbox basically. So I'm back over at my toolbox. I just wanted to run through the coolant for your E46 BMW. There's only two types of coolant that I would recommend for your E46. And the first one is use the genuine BMW coolant. That's certainly your preferred coolant. It's specifically designed for the E46 M54 engine. It's not expensive. It works out at about $15 Australian per litre. The coolant system for the six cylinder M54 engine holds about eight and a half litres. So if you're mixing a 50-50 blend, you're gonna need at least three to four litres of the BMW coolant. As an alternative to the BMW coolant, I would recommend the Motul coolant, which you can get from clickableautomotive.com and that would be the only other brand that I would recommend using. If you don't know what coolant you've got, get yourself some of the BMW coolant and do a complete flush and refill with the BMW coolant. You'll find your cooling system, when you make that change, will operate so much better and not cause any damage to your engine or to the cooling system components. So how do you flush it? Well, there's three drainage points for your E46 BMW with the six cylinder engine. As I showed you before, there's a drain plug on the bottom of the expansion tank. There's a drain plug on the bottom of the radiator. And the third drainage point is on the engine block itself. You'll need to access that from underneath the car. So if you go up between the sway bar and your tie rod through that gap at the back of the aircon unit, you'll see that bolt there. So you need to drain that. So drain from those three places, put the plugs back in, fill it with fresh water, run your engine for a couple of minutes, and then drain it again. I would probably do that at least three times until you see only clear water come out of the system because it's so important that you don't mix blends of coolant with inside the engine because that is a real no-no. So make sure you've got it properly flushed before you top up with the new coolant. So to recap, my points here are, when you buy your E46 BMW, unless your previous owner has specifically told you that they've changed all those components in the last six months, then I would set aside $500 and get yourself a complete hose kit, expansion tank, radiator caps, drain plugs, sensors, and while you're doing all that, it wouldn't hurt to change the belts as well, and set aside a weekend. So get all those parts ordered, some new coolant, replace all those components, and you will be right to go for a couple of years. It's a really worthwhile investment, and it's something that you have to do 
as soon as you buy an E46 BMW to prevent coolant issues and potential engine seizure or cracked heads, warped heads, any of that sort of really expensive stuff to fix. So first thing you're gonna do is fix up your coolant system. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos about uh, E46 maintenance, performance upgrades, and to follow along my journey on my E46 build, then hit the subscribe button and tickle that bell so you get notified each time a new video comes out. I've really enjoyed your company. And until we meet again, look after yourselves, stay safe, and TTFN.